Here's a distressing headline I stumbled over this morning, one that I'm highlighting here so it doesn't get lost in this week's tsunami of distressing headlines. Texas lawmakers failed to address rising pregnancy-related death rate during their legislative session. Hannah Gold, writing at Jezebel, the feminist news site, was reacting to and signal boosting, as the kids say, an Associated Press story that, holy shit, did not bury the lead. From the Associated Press, lawmakers in Texas failed to take any significant action to address the state's skyrocketing rate of pregnancy-related deaths just months after researchers found it to be the highest, not only in the U.S., but the developed world. The pregnancy-related death rate in Texas, the numbers of pregnant women dying every year, doubled between 2010 and 2012, a study from the University of Maryland found. Now, in fairness to Texas, a state dominated by anti-woman, anti-immigrant, anti-gay, anti-trans, pro-Trump, pro-police brutality, pro-pollution, pro-climate catastrophe, elected officials who aren't themselves interested in being fair to anyone, in fairness to Texas, maternal death rates rose all over the United States during the same period, but by a percentage point or two. In Texas, maternal death rates doubled, which the authors of the report said couldn't be explained, quote, in the absence of war, natural disaster, or severe economic upheaval. Now, they meant a shooting war, of course, obviously, because, you know what, there actually is a war on in Texas, they could have mentioned, and it's not a shooting war, but it is an ongoing war against women in Texas and all other states controlled by Republican televangelists. Legislators in Texas are waging war on women's health care, defunding Planned Parenthood, blocking Medicaid expansion under Obamacare, In 2011 alone, as Molly Redden highlighted at The Guardian, the Texas state legislature, controlled by televangelists, cut $74 million from the state's $111 million family planning budget. So, yeah, there's a war on. A war with casualties and a body count. The news out of Texas is especially galling for those of us whose memories stretch all the way back to March of last year, March of 2016. That's when the Supreme Court heard arguments in Whole Women's Health versus Hellerstedt. Whole Women's Health is a women's clinic in Texas. John Hellerstedt is the commissioner of the Texas Department of State Health Services. Whole Women's Health was challenging Texas's TRAP regulations, TRAP, T-R-A-P, Targeted Regulation of Abortion Providers. The Supreme Court has ruled that women have a constitutional right to abortion, but states can regulate abortion services. TRAP legislation is designed to regulate abortion clinics and services out of existence by creating expensive or impossible mandates around facilities and services. Texas argued before the Supreme Court that the point of its new TRAP regulations approved in 2013 wasn't to stop women from having abortions or shut down abortion clinics, even though three quarters of the state's clinics shut immediately after the law was passed. Oh, no, no, no. The point was to protect women's health, to protect women who were seeking abortions. Texas's trap law did two things. It required doctors to have admitting privileges from a nearby hospital, and it required clinics to, quote, comply with building regulations that would make them ambulatory surgical centers, as Dahlia Lithwick reported at Slate at the time. The effect of the law would have, quote, required rural women to haul ass across land masses larger than the whole state of California in order to take a pill in the presence of a doctor in a surgical theater. Texas was shredded in court. You're going to want to go look up Lithwick's piece if you want a feminist pick-me-up to start your morning, and be sure to say a prayer for the health and safety of Justices Ginsburg, Kagan, Sotomayor, and Stevens, because Texas's bullshit trap regulations don't make women safer. And they didn't apply as the four feminist justices on the Supreme Court drove home that day to other medical procedures that are far, far riskier than abortion, which is a very safe procedure, safer than carrying a pregnancy to term. Colonoscopies, for instance, have higher complication rates and higher death rates, and you can get one of those at a fucking tasty freeze in Texas. So to recap, Texas Republicans gutted women's health services and then crafted trap legislation that would shut abortion clinics. And they didn't do either of those things because they care about protecting women. If they did, they would have done something about their pregnancy-related death rate when they found out about that. Trap legislation isn't about protecting women. It's about controlling women. We knew that all along. And Texas got caught lying to the Supreme Court about that. But if anyone out there was confused about what trap legislation does or what legislators in Texas are up to, If anyone out there thinks 
Texas televangelists give one single flying fuck about the health or safety of women in Texas, this news has to open your eyes. Texas enacts one set of policies that cause the pregnancy-related death rate to skyrocket at the same time that Texas argues before the Supreme Court that another policy, their trap laws, is necessary to protect women. And shortly after the Supreme Court overturns Texas's trap law, the state learns of those skyrocketing pregnancy-related death rates and does nothing, fuck all, to protect women after learning that. If you're only half paying attention, if you hear about aggressive abortion clinic regulations and think, well, why not an ambulatory surgical center? Better safe than sorry. Look to the actions of the people pushing these regulations. If they claim they're protecting women on Monday and then do nothing about dead women on Tuesday, they were lying on Monday. (sighs) I've said it before. I'll say it again. We talk about Trump all the time. Me too. I'm guilty of it too. But taking back the White House and Congress That's not enough. We've also got to take back the state houses and the governor's mansions, too.